Hey everyone, welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. My name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. And I'm also the author of the book, Clever Girl Finance, Ditch Debt, Save Money, and Build Real Wealth. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some frugal living tips that can help you save a ton of money. And frugal living can mean different things to different people, but it all boils down to being intentional about how you spend your money so that you can put the money you save towards the things that really matter to you. And frugal living can also help you accelerate how quickly you're able to attain your goals, especially when it comes to things like saving money, paying off debt, investing, and etc. So let's get into some of my top frugal living tips. Number one, sell things that you don't need. Listen, a ton of us have things in our homes that we don't need, we don't want anymore, and we don't use. And these are items that we can easily put on platforms like Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, eBay, etc., to get some cash that we can put towards our goals. So take some time to look around your house to find the things that you don't need or don't use and figure out how you can make some quick cash by putting them up for sale. Number two, buy used. Listen, there is nothing wrong in buying used items or pre-owned items depending on what the item is. And you can actually save a ton of money off of the full retail price if you buy a pre-owned item. So it's definitely something to consider, especially for things that are not personal items. You can definitely buy used to save a ton of money. Number three, return the things that you don't need. We've all been guilty of going to the mall, going to the store to buy things that we don't need and then we regret them because we don't wear them or we feel like we made a big mistake. And so once you recognize that, if you're still within your return limit, your return time frame, take those items back to the store and get your money back. Number four, buy a car you can afford. There is nothing you have to prove to anyone by driving the fanciest car if it is a struggle for you to pay for this car or if you have to go into debt to pay for this car. Buy a car that you can afford that is good on mileage, that gets you to your destination and does not derail you from being able to achieve the financial goals that you set for yourself. Number five, shop around for the best insurance. So I personally make it a point once a year to review the different insurance options that we have that we pay for to see if I can get the same coverage for our needs elsewhere at a lower price. And sometimes when you tell your insurance company that you are shopping around, they may, e they may even offer you a better rate. So take some time out, put a reminder on your schedule to shop around for better insurance depending on what you pay for right now. Number six, swap out your light bulbs. And yes, I said light bulbs. It is one of those things that we all have in our homes that we tend to overlook. But by simply swapping out those bulbs that we have, the standard basic ones for LED bulbs, we can save a ton of money on our electric bill. And that money you save can be put towards your goals. Seven, evaluate your subscriptions. This is the day and age of subscriptions upon subscriptions upon subscriptions. Do we really need Hulu, Netflix, AMC Plus, Disney Plus, HBO Max, gym membership, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The subscriptions can add up to a ton of money. So really take a good hard look at all the things you're paying for on a monthly basis and determine if you're actually using them and if you're actually getting your money's worth. If you're not, it's okay to cancel those subscriptions and put that money towards something else that makes sense that you actually use. Number eight, Consider downsizing your living space. So if you're paying a lot of money for your home or for the apartment that you own or rent, it's a good idea to think about ways that you can save money. And one of these ways is to downsize your living space. So move to a smaller place or to a more affordable neighborhood, or maybe even rent out rooms in your home, in your apartment, where you can earn some money to put towards your other goals. Especially if you are in a place where you're feeling really tight about your housing costs, you want to consider if you're able to downsize over time. Number nine, Try a low buy or a no buy challenge. And this is basically where you don't buy anything or you only buy your core essentials 
for a specific period of time. And doing a low buy or a no buy can really help you get clear on where you're spending your money because you'll be able to keep in mind when you're feeling tempted and make a note of it. You'll be able to identify moments in time when you're commuting to work or hanging out with your friends where you want to spend money. And doing a low buy or a no buy can help you really get clear about how you want to spend your money intentionally, right? Taking a break from spending can give you clarity. So I definitely recommend doing one of those low buy or no buy challenges you can do them for a week you can do them for a month and you can combine do you can combine doing them with a journal where you write down your triggers your temptations and you review them to make sure that you're able to gain that clarity that you need from doing that challenge number 10 meal plan so meal planning is a great way to save money because essentially you plan your meals and your grocery shopping ahead of time, which means you can cut back on ordering in or eating out because you have nothing to eat. And you can also really be mindful of how much you're spending on groceries that you're not going to eat because you've planned your meals ahead of time and you know exactly what you're going to be cooking. And in line with that, number 11, cooking in bulk can actually save you a ton of money because you can cook and put the food in your freezer and then heat it up as you get hungry or as you go to work, etc. And by cooking in bulk, again, you minimize the temptation to want to order in as often if that's something that you do. And you also make sure that you always have something to eat whenever you get hungry. Number 12, in line with meal planning and cooking in bulk is taking a look in your pantry. There are so many times where I personally have gone to the store to buy stuff that I already had in my pantry, or I could have created meals based on what I already had in my pantry and saved some money. So it's a good idea to take a look in your pantry to see what you have and see if you can even skip a grocery trip by cooking what you have based on what you already have in your pantry. Number 13, skip the salon visits. And I'm not saying never ever go to the salon again to get your hair done or your nails done. Instead, I'm saying maybe skip every other visit and do your hair and your nails at home in between that time and put that money towards your savings goals or your debt payoff goals or whatever goals you have for yourself. By skipping a single visit every now and then, you can actually save a good amount of money. And number 14, work out at home or outdoors for free. Listen, gym memberships can be expensive. I know some gyms that charge up to $200 a month, but if you can motivate yourself to work out at home, work out with your family, go outside for a walk or for a run, you can actually save a good chunk of money over the course of a year and put that money towards your goals. So those are just a few frugal living tips that I personally leverage. And I would love to know what tips you use and what works best for you. So leave a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. If you have, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and head on over to Instagram to follow us there. We have a great time engaging on that platform. And don't forget to stop by Clever Girl Finance. We offer over 30 plus completely free courses to help you on your journey to financial wellness. I will talk to you guys in the next video.